Dude, that fire. Dude, you can feel it in your chest. <laughs> Our animal mission is simple. Education in action, conservation in action. This is Camp Kennet. What's going on, man? I'm hanging out with my friend Andrew Biddle here at Wild Florida. We also have Anthony and Christian. And today, we're actually gonna learn a thing or two. You're gonna teach me about what is entailed in training a large crocodilian. We got an American alligator here. His name is Crusher, right? Yeah, that's right. All right, and if you follow Andrew on, uh, on the old Instagram, you'll be acquainted with Crusher. We're actually gonna get in and why I'm excited about this is we're actually going to see why they train them. It's not just for a show, it's actually for a very particular reason. Uh, and you may want to jump in at any second, bud. Let me know, watch your head up here, by the way. I, I, I think the last thing you want to worry about when walking into a large crocodilian enclosure is watching your head. It's more like, watch for the jaws. Yeah, for real. But this is really cool, man. So they're getting us really unfettered access and I appreciate yeah, that today. It's, it's really cool to be so close to these animals, so. So our big thing, um, obviously, Crusher is our longest uh, American alligator here. Uh, believe it or not, he kind of looks a little small in the water, but he actually measures close to 14 foot. Uh, we guess he's right around a thousand pounds and judging by the size of his head and his size and everything um, we think that he's anywhere from 60 to 65 years old so he's Very a, cool. you know he's, he's an older old alligator crocodilians um, are long-lived species yeah so. so i mean they average 60 to 80 years um, and in some cases in captivity they can live over 100 so That's awesome. so we know he's got a lot of life left and he seems very healthy and and we like to showcase some of the training with him because believe it or not you can train alligators and crocodiles hey tom you're being very cavalier buddy like once <laughs> show everyone i can't believe how brave tom's being right now almost foolhardy to be honest um i'm a little worried about him because tom tom may have grew up in connecticut okay. and he's not necessarily you know a reptile expert but not it's a lot of crocodilians in connecticut yeah no, not no, a lot he's not. uh yeah. but i just wanted you to be aware buddy what are you doing your backs to the giant I gator I guess, I guess i guess you'd figure we'd say something is I'm that it comfy around crocs I yeah guess. don't, don't get too comfortable like gators, yeah. that's mistake number one what do you say yeah so that's that's one of the things we do talk about i mean um you know, he is a, a large alligator and, and a lot of times you're going to see some of it coming, but they're still super capable at that size. So um, one of the big mistakes actually in working with alligators and crocs is, is the comfortability, getting too comfortable. So every time that we go in here, um, we're kind of prepared that, hey, gotcha. look, this is an alligator. Uh, the only thing that we trust in Crusher is that, um, that he's an alligator. He's always going to be an alligator. That's about the only thing you can't trust. Um, but we can form these relationships or these bonds or um, more like understanding and respects with them. So that's what we try to show and, and that's what we're going to kind of do cool. right here. So Let's do it, man. All right. Good. What we're doing is called, um, it's positive reinforcement conditioning training. Um, it's pretty much, you know, we ask him to do a behavior and when he does, he gets rewarded with food because everybody knows the easiest way to any guy's heart or stomach. And if he does something that he's not supposed to or he's just, you know, showing us, hey, you know, I'm, I'm an alligator, um, we don't ever do any kind of negative reinforcement. Um, we just simply reset and start over. Okay. You know, it's, you know we're not going to punish him. You know, we can't expect him to to be something that he's not. And if some people that aren't reptile fans stumble upon this video, you may be asking yourself, well, they're stupid, mindless beasts, and that's not the case. Uh, Andrew's been working with crocodilians for many, many years, as have the other gentlemen here, myself included. And you'll find that these animals are very capable of learning, and, and that's what you're gonna show us right yeah, now. Yeah, so that's one of the things we like to say, is like, look, they, yeah, they do have a small brain, but they also have an advanced cerebral cortex that allows them to process patterns. I mean, let's face it, they've been around for millions of years and you don't live that long by being dumb. So, um, you know, they're not super intelligent, like let's say a chimp or a dolphin, but these guys are smart and they learn. And as you're gonna see, like I'm gonna go in here and work with him, I mean, at a thousand pounds, if he wanted to take me out, he's taking me out. So, but he's, he's kind of learned this, this pattern behavior and, uh, you know, and he kind of has an understanding. So he's clearly learning this, this stuff. So, Crusher here, come here. He's gonna be a little, oh, okay. Crusher here, come here. So the other obstacle that we always face too is like right now it's breeding season, so he's kind of like being a little distracted. Crusher here, come here, good boy. Now these guys are also very opportunistic and, and kind of lazy. 
Pressure, come up. Pressure, come up. Up, hold. So they're always trying to see what minimal work they can do for the most reward. So that's one of the obstacles we face with these guys too, is they're not gonna be so eager just to run over and do stuff. So they're they're kind of, you know, they can kind of be lazy. Now he's coming over to the camera, so. Yeah, you might wanna start back backing there. up. There yeah. you go. Yeah, Tom, <laughs> I'm worried about Tom now, man. I think, I think we've had a long string of good luck and it only takes one moment for things to go bad. So Tom. Pressure here. Be careful, bud. Pressure Look at here. this. Now, we, so we do have a, somewhat of an advantage working for us because it is kind of cooler and it's early. So he's not going to be super up uh, here. Focus on me. Here. Good boy. Pressure up. Pressure up. Right there. Hold. Good boy. So if you don't know, or I mean, I know you know, but anybody that's watching, alligators and crocodiles, they have the ability to bite down at 2,500 to 3,000 pounds per square inch of bite force. He has a massive head, so nice. that's going to be a really gnarly bite. So you don't, one of the things with doing this conditioning is able to work with him closely, um, especially like if he has an impacted tooth, if he's got some kind of eye problem, um, things like that, without having to catch and restrain him, because a lot of times that can cause so much stress. Um, that it could be more harmful than good for the animal. So by doing this conditioning, we're able to work really closely with them just to take better care of them. Yeah. That's like the main purpose. Now, obviously every day we're not gonna be drawing blood. So we do like to show people in ways by being a little more entertaining or, or, or something like that, but we're still doing the same training. So it's still the same routine. It's still the desensitization um, with the a animal, just not, you know, maybe we're not drawing blood, we're not doing this, that, or the other. Yeah, that's really so, cool. I mean, and, and that kind of reinforcement, as you said, uh, just makes your life more difficult if a problem does arise. Right, exactly. So now he's doing pretty good, so we'll go ahead and get in the water. It, alligators and crocodiles, they're the most capable, the most dangerous in the water, and they're the most territorial in the water, so. Pressure here. Here. Pressure here. Come here. Here. Here, here, now here, 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 come up, come up, hold. So I do a lot of touching too. They're obviously very sensitive around their mouths. They have what's called ISOs, these little freckles. So I can kind of control which way he turns his head by just giving him little touches on the side. But it also allows me to kind of check a lot of his We'll check his nostrils, check his teeth really good. Good boy. And so that's the positive reinforcement he gets fed. I so, mean, that's really cool, man. And let's look, I mean, I've seen this. I've been friends with Andrew for a while. I follow him on Instagram. But, and just like Tom, we're, we keep reminding Tom, it's easy to forget that this is a large apex predator. And now Andrew is in his here. domain. At any moment, if this animal decided that Andrew tasted better than the croc chow, he can get to Andrew faster than Andrew oh. can get out of that water. Here. Come here. So this is a lot of trust. So we, one of the things, too, is cool is we've been trying to work on, because we, don't, we also don't want to give the false oppression of like, oh, look, these guys are super safe and chill and, you know, oh, it's just the next alligator we see. So we've been working on showcasing some of their ability, like to get, you know, so, oh, wow, these you know, no, they are dangerous. Pressure here. Come here. Come up. Good boy. Right there. Hold. Hold right there. So, let's see if he's set. Now, it is a little cooler, and so he's going to be a little slower, but let's see if he'll continue to do it. Hold. Hold. Hold there. Hold there. Hold there. Hold there. Hold there. Pressure here. Is it going to give me a spin? Oh. Come here. Up. Pressure up. So, ah, he's not going to do it. Still a little early. So, well, we um, do get him to spin to show, because he can actually bite the tip of his tail. So, they, you know, they are still very capable, even at a thousand pounds. You know, he can spin around a lot faster than I can. Gotcha. But he's going to be a little, little slow and lazy today. So, he seems to be lining up pretty good. 
So let's see, Christian, do you want to come in and? Yeah. So we're we're gonna show you is to demonstrate how we would do a blood draw. So and I'm actually, if you want to come in, I'm gonna have yeah, you come I, in with I'd me. I'd love yeah, to share space with this guy and just get in there. For sure. That is awesome, man. Here. So we do verbal and visual. So they both see very well and they can hear very well. So um, one of the good things about that here. Now come up. Come up. Yeah, hold still. So he's gonna be a little pushy. Uh, right. Pull. Okay, yeah. so we're good. Cool. So we come in here during the show. Um, again, it's a training process as much as it is the show. And this is the part where we talk about and we visually show what it would look like to draw blood on an alligator because as many people know, their back's covered in bone plates. So to draw blood on a size, this size alligator, we would come from the tail. So if you want, Okay. We work on desensitization, so we pick up the tail. Right. You can touch. So we come in every day. We let him feel, and you can yep. kind of hold and touch. Gotcha. That way, he knows that human touch, human interaction is positive, and it's not going to hurt him. And it's okay. And then, if you want, you can use my work keys. We like to take foreign objects, like my work key in this case. Okay. And so like, kind of yeah, to hand. simulate, and you go in between the scales. What it would feel like to get like a needle put in? So that way, he understands foreign objects as much as you know a human touch. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, this is, how many years did it take this animal to get to this level um, of working with it? Believe it or not, he was the first one when I started two years ago. Um, these alligators had never been worked with. Um, and, and these were all nuisance trapped alligators. So all of our big gators here uh, are part of Florida's nuisance trapped alligator. So in Florida, if an alligator is deemed a nuisance, um, it has two fates. It has to be removed by the state and it can either be put down or euthanized for meat, things like that. Uh, or it could be brought to a facility like Wild Florida where it could live the rest of its life here. It can never be released in the wild. So he was trapped as a nuisance alligator, was taken to a farm, and then he came here. Wow. That's really cool. I mean, and you know, here's the thing. When you get a nuisance alligator of this size, for me, it just feels like such a shame to see them right. killed. Yeah. Because there's uh, so, just for an animal to achieve this size in uh, the wild, what it had to go through is just insurmountable. If you think about how they begin, one of 70 eggs, they then have to hatch, then they got to go through life out there in the swamps of Florida, man. So it's a really cool thing that you've done. But even more impressive is the fact that these animals are only being worked with after about two years, that they can learn that quickly. That shows you the level of crocodilian intelligence uh, the ability to learn is quick. Yeah, I mean, you know? he, he started picking it up once he realized what was going on. Within three or four months, he had a lot of the behaviors down. I mean, he was out in the center pond with 60 other alligators. When we realized the ability that he had, he's obviously the biggest, so it's gonna, people are gonna gravitate towards a very large animal. Um, we literally opened up the gate and just called him in. No and he's way. been in here for about a year. Um, and we don't have to worry about any other alligators or crocodiles. They're solitary by nature anyway, so it's not like he's lonely. These guys want, you know, as long as they have food, resources, he's, he's super he's happy. happy. Yep. Yeah. He gets yeah, heated pool. I mean, he's living uh, the, Another thing that I just think is important to uh, mention, the fact that they learn fast is also what got him in trouble is being a nuisance alligator. Exactly. That's why it's so important, and, and we try to preach nonstop, you know, do not feed alligators in the wild. You know, they naturally fear us, but when, it's just in this exact scenario, they learn people equal food. Yeah. And it doesn't take long where they're like, okay, this is an easy source. Here, he's got to live the rest of his life here, which we're, you know, we're happy, but then also sad because we want to see these guys in the wild. Um, but he cannot be released. So, you know, we do do a lot of feeding here because we have to feed him. And right. we want to be able to educate people while we do that. So that's why we do these shows to kind of inform people and kind of give them... Again, man, I just have to state, he's sitting here having a discussion with us inches away from jaws that could severely injure him. Oh. Now, they do only have such an attention span, so we do reward after that, but it's pretty common knowledge here. Crusher here. Then he knows you guys are in here, obviously, here. Um, but they, anything, any kind of movement in the water here, here, um, up, um, up. Um, any kind of thrashing, it's, it's to, it signals like a distressed or injured animal, that's an easy prey target. So they have a hard time not responding to that kind of behavior. Any kind of thrashing uh, like that. So one of the things we can do, and Christian will show you, is mimic that kind of behavior. So hold. 
So I'll do it and then you're gonna do it, man. Oh. We're gonna, we're gonna act like we're an animal that just fell in the water that does not know how to swim or can't get out of the water. Okay. Just to show how well he can hold. Oh. Ah! All right, your turn. <laughs> My turn? Yeah. All right, from right back here. Yep, right next right. to his tail. Show how good his hold is. All right, you ready? Splash yeah. around, my friend. Ah! Help! I've fallen and I can't get up! <laughs> that was pretty good. That's amazing. That's millions of years of instinct that he's ignoring. Exactly. So that's incredible, man. Yeah. Uh, good job, Crusher. Thanks for not <laughs> turning around and eating me. <laughs> the, the other thing that has to be said, you know, alligators, even though with their size, and I know you've worked with crocodiles, I know you've worked with crocodiles, many experts in your guys' field talk about alligators are some of the best to work with. Yeah. You know, they just seem to be uh, not necessarily puppy dogs, but they just have less of that aggressive nature. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, but this is just it's still a beautiful animal. In fact, that you're able to do this, Andrew, every day, and Christian and Anthony, I mean, backing us up here, it's just an amazing experience. And the fact that I'm in here right now and have this access is incredible, so. Well, and to touch on kind of what you're saying, the, you know, they, I like to tell people, they're like, well, what's more dangerous, alligators or crocodiles? Well, they're both dangerous, the same. They both yeah. have the same abilities. Crocodiles do have more of an ambush predatorial behavior. So they tend to be a little more aggressive, where these guys are more lazy, opportunistic. Um, you know, they're, they think of the prey, they eat, they eat turtles, they have this big head that's designed to crush. Um, they'll eat snails, uh, fish, the, you know, where you, the crocs are taking out the zebra and stuff. So they do, they do tend to have that more kind of laid back personality. Uh, but then you need to go further, we're, we're coming right into breeding season. So you, all the, you've seen the males earlier bellowing, so in theory, this is when he should be the most territorial. Like it's breeding season, we're getting to breed. He should, I'm the biggest alpha male and everybody needs to know that. And he's blocking all of that out right now to kind of just participate in this behavior. Yeah, that's big. So we're that's super big. proud of this guy. I always say with the croc and alligator analogy, do you want to get shot with an Uzi or do you want to get shot with a shotgun? <laughs> Both would suck. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's yeah. right. So anyway, guys, you know what? We're going to wrap this up because he's been incredibly patient. I want to thank Andrew, Christian, and Anthony, and everyone at Wild Florida for allowing us in here to share space with their beautiful animal. And if you're ever in Central Florida, Look up Wild Florida, come on out, meet the guys, they're accessible. Uh, it's a really fantastic and beautiful, well-maintained park. I can't recommend it highly enough. Uh, and there you go, like and subscribe. Don't forget to head on over to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash if you wanna help us out to produce more quality content to educate you guys and to show off beautiful animals like Crusher. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, man, thank you very much. hours just to catch what are you doing dude you're gonna get warts you're gonna get fruit warts